Hello and welcome to uh, first in a series of uh, tutorials on DP Kit Part Move. Okay, let's get started. What I need to do is actually add some geometry. So we'll just quickly activate a box. There we go, a box there, and we'll just multiply it so we've got more than one part. There two, 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 just to spread them out a little bit. So we can see what we're doing. There we go, and there we get we've got four boxes. DP kit. DP kit parts are different to lightwave parts. Try not to get them confused in the same model because it ends in tears. I know I've been there. But okay, so what is a DP kit part? Well, basically, it's the same as you would get with select connected. So if we pick a polygon, hit select connected, that is what DP kit considers a part. And I could do that with all the others and you would see the same because there is no shared geometry between them. They are completely separate and therefore in DP kit size they are part move size. They are completely separate pieces of geometry. Okay, well what I'll do is I'll save this and send it over to, to uh, Layout and I'll see you over there shortly. We can see we've got our object here and as normal with Lightwave it acts all as one thing because it's all one object as far as Lightwave is concerned. So what we're going to try and achieve today is to actually create an animation with these blocks falling down from above and landing on the ground and stopping but in a staggered formation. Okay so how do we get started? Right first of all we need to go to make sure we've got the cubes connect, selected as our object and we need to go to properties and we need to go to the Re deform tab because what we're going to use is use the deform nodal editor to move our blocks around. So we'll click on that to uh, activate it. Just a brief word, if you're using subdivision objects, you, what you need to do is set the subdivision order to last. Otherwise, DP kit gets very confused and you get some very strange geometry. But anyway, let's get back to where we were. Deform, and we'll open up the node editor. Right, there we go, straightforward node editor. Let's just move things around so we can see what we're doing. Right, there we go. There's a node editor, there's our blocks. We will load up parts move right okay so we have a couple of things I want to tell you about this first obviously you have all the various inputs there and all the various outputs here so the first thing to bear in mind is, is quite important is this delta you will notice this displacement input it only has an input input delta basically is a sum of all the things that can change for a displacement so it includes rotate move scale etc etc all piped down into one sort of channel so you only have one connection to do rather than loads for each individual um, aspect of the animation so if we plug that in there we get nothing happened which is fair enough what deep what does part move actually do well, first time I opened it up and had a look at it, it confused me because I couldn't see any way of actually controlling an individual part from the inputs that we had. So there's no thing that says move part one in this particular way, up, down, left, right or whatever. But what I didn't understand at the time was this is actually a, basically a loop. What it does, it cycles through each time and applies the uh, inputs to it, to each object in uh, each object in turn. So if we open up this, I'll cover lots of this later on in, in further tutorials. What we're interested in today in, is this one here, show ID. So if we click that on, get rid of it, you can actually see how it numbers the objects. So basically it's cycling around four times. The first time round it moves, point, uh, moves part zero, second time round moves part one, third time round moves part two and so on. Okay, so how do we actually use this? Well, if we add a constant, we'll add a constant vector because we want to move and we'll plug that into move and we can see, ah, the whole thing's moved, which isn't what we wanted. We want to move it as parts and it's also moving in three directions, which isn't entirely what we wanted either. So we'll first of all change that. So we'll just get rid of the X and the Z. So it only moves in one dimension, it only moves up, which is what we want it to do. Okay, so now we have the, all four objects are moving up as one. They're moving up one metre above the ground and sitting there. But that's not entirely what we wanted. We want them all to move separately. So how do we do that? Well, what we need is another node. So we'll go back to DP kit. And what we need is a part info. 
and this works with this node as it cycles round this cycles round as well and for each part it gives you lots of positions so the index actually gives you the number so the index the first time around it cycles round you'll get the index number of zero then one two three and so on so how do we actually get the blocks to move individually well what we might think we could do is actually add the vector the movement vector we've got to the index number so let's do that and see what happened so we'll go to math and we want vector add so let's add that to that and that to that and plug that in to move and it all moves separately but it's not quite what we wanted that's what happens with vector maths because we may have set this one to be just moving on the y but what's happening is this one is actually using the index position to actually add to all of these as well. It's not actually selecting just the Y channel. So it's moving the first one zero, part zero, it's moving that just one plus zero, which is what we've got there, which so it's moving it one up. Part one is actually adding one from here to one from there, but it's also adding to one to the X and the Z as well. So it's actually moving it in directions we don't want. So that's obviously wrong. So how do we get rid of that? We need to split it out and just control the Y. And the way we can do that is actually just to use a make vector node, which converts three scalar numbers into one vector position. And the way you can find it is just typing in, if you don't know where something is, just type it in the top box and it comes up as a search engine and, 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 and finds you the various nodes. Okay, so we also don't want a vector. We'll change that to be a scalar to match the inputs for our thing. So delete that and then it goes back to the ordinary thing. So we'll go to go to constant scalar and that's one as it is. And we want a constant scalar add to actually move our blocks around. So I plug that into Y, plug that into move and push. There we go. We've got our objects staggered and in position. So, how do we actually make that move? Well, the easiest way of getting some sort of movement happening is to drive it by something that actually changes over time. We could use something like a keyframe null or some other animation, but what I'm actually going to do is actually just use a time node. So I'm just going down to the DB and W, additional and add time info. Right, and what we can do with that is just replace the time with our fixed number. And now if we drag the slider along, you can see all our blocks are moving, which is great. But two things. Firstly, they're moving in the wrong direction, which we'll sort out first. So how do we make this move into the right direction? Well, at the moment, we've got a count up. So it's adding up and adding that motion. So it's actually moving it, doing it in the Y direction. One of the easiest ways of actually changing it, which actually gives us some flexibility, which you'll find out in the future, is actually subtract time from a constant. So we get a count down. So let's make that, say, four. And we'll go to the maths and we'll add a mathematics, we'll add a uh, subtract node. So plug that to that and that to that and that in there. Okay, so now our blocks are moving. Just add a little bit more time to this so we can see what's happening a bit more clearly. So, drag the slider along and you can see, which is great, but they're not actually stopping. They're just carrying on and going straight through the ground. So how do we solve that? Well, what we can actually use is what's called a clamp node. So there we go, it's still in mass scalar clamp. And what this does, Basically, is it limits an input uh, between two numbers, the low and the high, that you put in. So any input that comes in that's below zero will get truncated to zero, and any input that comes in that's above one will get truncated to one. So let's plug this in and see what we get. Out. So now we can see our blocks are fixed at one. And then they move down and stop on the ground. 
I'd like them to move a little bit further than that. So what we can actually do is increase the high. So we'll say four. Close that. So now our blocks start off at four units off the ground and fall down in series and hit the ground and stop. And there we go. There's our first animation. And I think we'll leave it here as our 10 minutes is up and we'll carry on with this in future tutorials. Okay, thank you.